What's up, basketball fans? Welcome to the Warriors Report. It's time to talk about the crazy amount of rumors that have come out surrounding the Toronto Raptors, from Toronto Raptors being interested in three big men to two mysterious teams being interested in Fred VanVleet's services. Also, what it would take for the Raptors to trade OJ and Obi, and some trade rumors surrounding Gary Trent Jr. as well. I will be breaking all of that fun stuff for you guys in today's video. But one thing I do want to address before we start, a lot of you guys have been sitting, and I know I've been mispronouncing the word players and player, but I can pronounce it. It's just sometimes as a YouTuber, I need to tell myself to slow down a little bit because your thoughts and your words come out wrong sometimes and the mispronunciation happens. So again, I, I like to laugh at myself, guys. I does, it truly doesn't bother me that you guys are making fun of me, but I am going to slow down a little bit more just so I'm making sure that I'm pronouncing the words correctly. But if you're ready to watch this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you wish to hit the like button as well, that would be very much appreciated. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. Now, unfortunately, there is no shout out for today's video because no one got the trivia question correct. The trivia question, the answer, correct answer was Jeff Doughton, who leads the Raptors in free throw percentage. But let's get on to these trade rumors, addressing the big man trade rumors first. Reported by NBA Central, Miles Turner and DeAndre Ayton have been two centers on Toronto's radar, according to Jake Fisher. And not only that, the Celtics and Raptors have registered significant interest in Jakob Pertl. Now, this should come as to no surprise to anyone Considering the Raptors are one of the worst defensive rebounding teams in the entire NBA, they also clearly need some rim protection because teams are just getting in the paint and scoring a lot in the paint there. The Raptors are in desperate need of a center. So what I've decided to do is compare these three big men. I've gone through some of the statistics, their salaries as well, and I'll be discussing who makes the most sense for the Toronto Raptors. So taking a look at the chart here, I've highlighted a few things, and those statistics that are underlined determine which player is the best out of those three statistically. Now, obviously, taking a look at points per game, I think it's this is probably the easiest to say. Miles Turner is the most skilled offensive player out of these three, scoring 17.4 points. Rebounding-wise, although DeAndre Ayton obviously leads these three for 9.7 rebounds, I think it's very disputable that Jakob Pertl is probably, again, probably the best defender. Excuse me, I should say the best rebounder out of all of these. He's a really good rebounder. He positions himself well. And again, same thing with assists as well. This is very debatable i know Jakob pertle averages 2.9 assists but you could argue that deandre in plays with better players yet he's still averaging less less assists per game than Jakob. again it's very it's a very close in terms of deandre Ayton and Jakob pertle they're both really good in passing the ball for so for their position but taking a look at the next few statistics these are the statistics i really wish you guys would focus on especially concerning the toronto raptors the free throw percentage is key now, Jakob Pertl, I really like him, but 58.7% is not a good percentage for a center. Now, you may ask why. Because centers are needed in late-game situations, and I want to use this example. When you speak of this, you recall that Ray Allen shot, but no one recalls what happens prior to it. That was Tim Duncan being on the bench and Chris Bosh grabbing the offensive rebound. A lot of crucial games go down to the wire on all it depends on is getting a very important rebound. So that's why it makes it a little bit difficult to play guys like Jakob in late game situation in case he gets fouled and he's going to be missing some free throws. So again, that's where you look at someone like a Miles Turner with his decent free throw percentage. Now, in terms of three point percentage as well, this is very important because the Raptors have Pascal and Scotty Barnes who like to operate in the paint, but also because the Raptors are not a good three point shooting team. So having these services of someone like a Miles Turner shooting 39%. 39 is amazing for any NBA player, let alone a center, would be an absolute amazing asset to have for your team. Now, DeAndre, I do wish to highlight that his 31.8% is because he's averaging less than one attempt a game. So those numbers are a little bit inflated. Him and Jakob both don't really shoot the three at all. So again, that's going to be something that may hurt the Raptors if they wish to acquire DeAndre Aiden or Jakob Pearl. And again, blocks per game, I do want to emphasize the Raptors need some rim protection. Now, just because Miles Turner averages 2.3 blocks doesn't necessarily mean he's a great rim protector. It just means he can test a lot of shots that go to the rim. And I know that may sound contradicting, but Jakob Pertl is the best rim protector out of these three. He's a really good defender, and he's very underrated defensively. He's probably the top five in terms of defensive centers 
around the NBA. He moves his feet well. He's very versatile as well. So again, these are just some of the statistics I wanted to highlight, but there are also a few other things I wanted to take into consideration as well. And let's take a look at some of those key things. Now, a few things I really wanted to emphasize on is obviously age is a big factor in who they acquire. You obviously don't want, again, not that any of these players are 30 years old, but you obviously want one that fits into the timeline. Now, DeAndre Ayton probably fits into the timeline pretty well because he's young, but he's also making $30.9 million per season. That's the only thing. He's look again, he's 6'11, 250, great size for him, but $30 million for a center like DeAndre Eaton, a little bit too much. Now, taking obviously a look at Miles Turner, he makes $17.5 million, but he's an expiring contract, much like Jakob Pertl. Jakob Pertl makes $9.3 million, which makes him a little bit easier to trade. But the only thing is, San Antonio is also asking for reportedly, again, reportedly for two first round picks. And for an expiring contract, guys, I don't know. Again, there's obviously some safe trades. If you do trade for DeAndre and you have him locked for another three and a half seasons, whereas Miles Turner and Jakob Pertl are both heading into free agency. I will say one thing, though. I will say one thing regarding Jakob Pertl is that you would have his bird right. So that is very key that you could possibly retain him or match any offers that come his way. So again, for, for me personally, obviously, Miles Turner fits the best. The only thing is if there's one player out of these that's most likely to be going to another team and leaving the Raptors if they were to acquire him. I think that's Miles Turner. Something about him just states that he'd probably want to go somewhere else. So there's a lot of risk in trading for Jakob Pertl and Miles Turner. So again, it depends. Like, Do you really want to give up a first round pick and, and then have these guys leave in free agency? That's 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 a big risk. Whereas DeAndre, and you have that safety net where he's locked in for 3.5 more seasons. So that's the only thing. Again, if you were to ask me, I think obviously Miles Turner fits the best given the fact that he can stretch the floor. He's obviously very offensively talented. Jakob Pertl also would be a really good fit had he hit his free throws a little bit better and if he could stretch the floor a little bit. But I do want to hear your opinion on this. But let's move on to the next trade rumor here. Now, the next one is about Gary Trent Jr. And this was by Bleacher's Report. Most of these guys I do want to address. Most of these rumors are by Jake Fisher, if it doesn't state already, and Shams Charnia. But this was NBA rumors. Raptors would seriously listen to Gary Trent Jr. trade offers. Now, you're probably wondering, why would the Raptors want to trade a 23, soon to be 24-year-old? Because he's very most likely to bolt in free agency. That's why you listen to trade offers now rather than to lose him for nothing. The Raptors have a hard time acquiring assets through free agency. And one of the best ways to do it is through trades. And why not trade for why not trade a young player that has a lot of value around the NBA? Again, I say this. I know a lot of Raptors fans feel upset that why would you trade a 24-year-old guy? I say this because Gary Trent Jr. does not rebound well, does not pass well. He gets steals. He's not a great defender. He scores in bunches, but he's also hot and cold. That's why, like, besides scoring, he doesn't provide a lot for you. Despite being 6'5", that's a good size for an NBA player. So if you can get assets for him, if you can get a better shooting guard, if you can trade Gary Trent Jr. and get a center, why would you not do this? That's what I'll see about Gary Trent Jr., I'll leave it for future videos, guys, but I'd want to address this rumor because I know a lot of people wonder why the Raptors would want to trade for him. You're going to be paying him also a lot of money in free agency. So that's all I'll say regarding Gary Trent Jr. Let's talk about the next rumor here. Now, this was coming by Shams Chania. Again, NBA Central had an enormous amount of rumors surrounding the Toronto Raptors, and this one stated if they want to go and get serious with OJ Nanobi or a Pascal Siakam, they have all the picks in the world, Shams Chania on the Pelicans. And I do want to address the next rumor as well before I state my opinion on this one. And this one was by Bleacher's Report that said, OG and Anobi trade would require a haul in DeJounte Murray range, which obviously we know included four first round picks. Two of them, correct me if I'm wrong, were unprotected. Now, the Raptors have no reason to trade OG and Anobi. I will say one thing right off the bat. They have no reason to trade one of the best defenders in the NBA. This article actually went on to state that he's a Masai Ujiri type of player that he wants. He's Masai's favorite, as they coded. Why would the Raptors want to trade a 6'6", 6'7", player who's 25 years old, who's in a very reasonable contract, who's doing taking steps offensively, he's guarding multiple positions, he's one of the best defenders in the NBA. Personally, it doesn't make sense because he's, he's the perfect age for the Raptors to build around. If they decide to rebuild, if they decide to rebuild, he's the perfect player to build around. I know people say, well, they have picks and stuff. This is the reason why the Raptors would not trade OG and Anobi. Now, is he worth four first-round picks? Probably not. Let's be honest. He's a really good player. But the reason they mentioned the four first-round picks is because the Raptors have no desire to trade OG and Anobi. Why would you want to trade OG and Anobi for nothing? Unless it's a crazy haul, which is why this is being stated. So again, 
that's why it's being stated. I don't think the Raptors treat him. Now, when it comes to Pascal Siakam and the Pelicans, in fact, again, the big thing is, <laughs> the big thing I do want to state is what, like, from a Pelicans point of view, too, how does that make sense? You got GV at center. You got Zion Williamson at power forward. You got Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum at one. I forget who their two is. But where are you fitting Pascal Siakam into that? Unless you're treating JV fillers and something else, there's not like I don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not I'm not saying I wouldn't take the Pelicans first round pick this year. But the Raptors, I don't know, man. Even with Pascal Siakam, they have no reason to trade one of the better offensive players in the NBA. He's a top 15 player easily. He's a good rebounder. He's a good passer. He's a good, he's a good defensive player. He does multiple things for the Raptors, which are very underrated and underappreciated. The Raptors don't have to give up anything. Again, these are just trade rumors and more so suggestions than anything. I don't think they're doing that, but I really wanted to address this last rumor because I know people have a lot of opinions on Fred Van Lee, so let's get to it. Now, there was a report again by NBA Central. Shout out to them. They were doing a lot of work today that stated the Phoenix Suns and Orlando Magic are a potential suitor for Fred Van Lee in free agency. One thing I do want to address, guys, this rumor has kind of been unfortunately reported wrong on a lot of platforms a lot of people are saying they're interested in fred van lead not as in their interest in fred van lead right now in trades this is talking about free agency so i've been hearing a lot of fans stating that fred van lead for deandre Ayton, that's first of all it's not going to work fred van lead makes about 18 19 million dollars a season deandre Ayton makes 30 you get to add another 11 12 million dollars so you get to throw in chris boucher there as well so again i wouldn't be opposed to that deal don't get me wrong I actually really like that deal, but I also want to address the next rumor as well, which stated that Van Vliet Raptors appear open to resuming contract talks at season's end. Now, I've been reading a lot of comments, guys. I'm everywhere from YouTube to Bleachers Report to Reddit. I'm reading all sorts of comments, and a lot of people are saying, why would you want to re-sign Fred Van Vliet? He sucks. He's this, guys. Trust me when I say this. Half faith in the Raptors' management. Like, I know people want to trade Fred Van Vliet, which is perfectly fine given the season he's had. Let's be honest. He's had a terrible season. I'm saying this as a Raptors fan. He's had a terrible season. Why would you want to keep him? But the thing is, who are you replacing him with? You can trade him for a center, and you can put Scotty Barnes at point guard. But our guard depth sucks as it is. So you're getting rid of Fred Van Leet. You're getting rid of Gary Trent Jr. Like, who's in the backcourt? You can put OG as a small shooting guard, excuse me. But who's like, look at the depth. They have no depth, man. Like, who? Like we need some sort of point guard. And the thing I do want to address, guys, before we talk about Fred Van Leet trades, is this man wants to be here. I know he's struggling, and I'm not defending his play. He's been shit. He's been playing terribly, but it's one of those things that Fred and the ownership, or excuse me, management will have to discuss. If they are to discuss moving him or re-signing him, is they need to address that. He needs to realize his role as a point guard. He needs to pass a little bit more. I don't agree with his style of play. Like He doesn't play like a point guard. He plays like a shooting guard all-star, and he's not that. He forces up bad shots. He drives in the lane and does some silly things sometimes. And it doesn't make sense. So I'm not here defending Fred Van Vliet. Uh, the only question is, who are you replacing him with? And again, you play Scotty Barnes at point guard, guys. Who do you have as a backup? Like the Raptors don't attract a lot of free agents. This is someone who wants to be here. And by the way, this article did go on to state, and this is going to trigger a lot of Raptors fans, is he's going to opt out of his $22 million deal at the end of the season so again i don't know if they're doing a cheaper deal for longer years i don't know how that works this is some of the weirdest play i've seen from an nba player being a good shooter like fred van Lee, drop off as poorly as he has again if he plays more like a point guard i'm all for keeping him i'm not opposed to keeping him he's a good defender for a lot of people that say that he gets blown by he does i'm not going to sit here and defend that he has good hands though he's a good help defender he also does very little things that go unnoticed and one thing I will say, what I've been noticing a lot of him lately is watch his positioning on the defensive side and where he positions himself. There's a reason he gets a decent amount of rebounds as a point guard. So again, his shot needs to come up to where it was before. And again, I know people feel like he's getting $30 million, guys. Don't take my word. Take Masai Ujiri's word. Masai is no idiot. Bobby Webster aren't idiots that they're going to pay Fred Van Vliet $30 million. Believe me, even with the inflation, of salaries going up. There's no way they're paying him that much. They didn't want to pay Serge Ibaka whatever, 15, 18 million dollars. And I know they were doing that for because they wanted to save up for Giannis, but they did that for a reason because they didn't think he was worth that much. And what did you see next season? Serge Ibaka completely fell off. So have some faith in the management. Whatever moves they decide to do, whether they move Fred Van Lee at the trade deadline or not, they always do have the option of a sign and trade in the offseason. And for those who are wondering, the Suns, I mean, look, you can always make a trade with them during the offseason as well. So that's the only thing I will state. Um, again, it'll be very interesting to see 
what the Raptors do at the NBA trade deadlines. It's just crazy amount of rumors. No one really knows which direction they're going in. Obviously, they have to uh, win games if they do plan on building on what they have right now. And if they continue to lose, well, Masai may just say, let's rebuild it. So again, we'll see what happens. It's going to be very interesting, but I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on this. I know a lot of people, again, I want to address this quickly before I end the video. I know a lot of people say, why would you keep him over Gary Trent Jr.? Guys, Gary Trent Jr., with all due respect, he's he's capped out. You really think Gary Trent Jr., 24 years old and 26 years old, is going to be that much of a difference? No. Think of someone like a Jordan Clarkson when he was with the Lakers, when he was with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was who he is now. It's just he's in a different role. Now he can come off the bench and he can shoot more freely, whereas with the starters, he obviously couldn't do that. I think that's Gary Trent Jr.'s role in the long term. I know people feel like he's a star player. He's not, guys. Let's be honest. He's a scorer. He's a bucket getter. He's a six man. And that's what he is. So we'll see what happens. Whereas Fred Van Vliet, he's more of a leader in the locker room. I know people don't believe it. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes, guys. So much more than you will ever know. Trust me when I say this. Trust me and have faith in the Raptors management. Anyways, guys, I don't want to run this video for too long. I know we've been running for quite some time. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, I do have a trivia question for you today. And that trivia question is, which player leads the NBA in rebounds per game? Is it a DeMontis Sabonis? Is it B, Rudy Gobert? Is it C, Nikola Jokic? Or is it D, Steven Adams? So whoever answers this trivia question correctly, first in the comment section, gets a shout out in my next video. So that will be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.